existing at the center of our galaxy may rest an invisible monster with a gravitational pull so strong nothing can escape its grasp, not even light. The most destructive thing in the cosmos is also one of the most incredible. Black holes warp space-time. They have an event horizon with an escape velocity at the speed of light. Everything gets trapped inside, getting sucked into the point of no return. The theory of black holes dates all the way back to Einstein with his general theory of relativity. Now, the general theory of relativity states that gravity is a result of space-time, along with stating that acceleration and gravity are indistinguishable. Einstein said that gravity simply distorts this space-time. Now, what is space-time? In a mathematical situation, space-time is just space and time into one entity. Here, think of space-time as a sort of net. This net is constant throughout the universe. All matter distorts or dents this net. Einstein's theory says gravity is not a force, but follows the curvature of this space-time. So let's take a trampoline. If you place a heavy object in the center and introduce a lighter object onto the trampoline, it will immediately roll towards it. So why does the moon orbit the Earth? Well, if you give the lighter object speed, then it will no longer roll directly into the object, but it will now orbit it. So how do black holes actually form and create this destructive force? Well, it all starts with something we see every night, the stars. Think of stars running on a type of fuel, hydrogen fuel. Heat and light are released when a star fuses hydrogen into helium. When stars start to run out of fuel, they begin to form heavier elements like iron. They also start to expand. When iron is produced in the core, the star collapses. Out of this, a neutron star remains. Now, say we have an even bigger star than the one forming a neutron star. It would go through the same processes, but gravitational pull would be so strong that the neutrons cannot stop the collapsing star. It continues collapsing until, finally, gravity is so strong that nothing, including light, could even escape once inside the event horizon. Schwarzschild discovered that if the radius of an object became small enough, then the escape velocity could reach the speed of light. Now, the escape velocity is just the amount of speed required to escape the gravitational pull of an object. Schwarzschild proved this by his equation. Rs equals 2 gm divided by c squared. So here, let's take the Earth. The escape velocity of the Earth is approximately 11 kilometers per second. The Moon is traveling at approximately 1 kilometer per second. Since the Earth's escape velocity is so much larger than that of the speed of the Moon, the Moon cannot escape the gravitational pull of the Earth, which is why it orbits us. So for an object to escape a black hole, it would have to be traveling faster than the speed of light which, as we know of, is impossible. If the escape velocity ever did reach the speed of light, the atomic and the subatomic particles would collapse to a single point, with a zero velocity but all of its mass. This point would be called the singularity. Black holes are extremely powerful forces lurking within the vastness of the universe. At the center lies the singularity, a mystery that could change our complete understanding of physics. An enigma to modern day scientists, one could only imagine what the future holds to discover about these destructive yet astonishing phenomena.